and if, if i were to try to zoom out a bit maybe on you and uh, look at your perspective is how have how has your work as a researcher what has what what are the key unique things that you have learned that was different for from you being a phd student at uh, carnegie mellon versus being a research scientist at facebook like what are the few things that you picked up as a as a student or just as, as a learner that you learned that that was only unique to maybe being a phd student versus that is really unique to being a research scientist as facebook uh i think like i can talk about commonalities and maybe then differences uh, so commonalities is like i think in general like you kind of need to accept failure uh, that's like <laughs> the one thing uh, failure is a part of this process failure is always going to be there and you just need to understand how like how many times you fail and every time that you fail you need to understand okay this is going to happen and how do you sort of move on from there i think that sort of has not changed uh and maybe it changes for other people uh, for me personally i haven't seen that um uh, i think the one thing that um, does change from like from being a student versus like working in industry is you get to see things change dramatically on like scale so when i talk about scale it's not it's the scale at which a problem is at tackled uh so in terms of how many people think about it the different perspectives they bring uh, to that to that particular problem uh the different sort of ideas ways of thinking about it that's actually like a big learning experience i think as a phd student the circle in which you sort of discuss things for your particular project is relatively small compared to uh, in industry where you actually get or at least in my case it is that you get access to a slightly larger group of people uh, who are working on it and people will work in very very different styles um uh, yeah. so that's actually kind of good to see um that's one of the things that dramatically changes then i think the other thing that as you sort of uh, move i guess from being student to or like in more and more years you uh kind of start developing like a uh, i would say gut feeling about things that you want to do or like your interest becomes more and more honed because initially everything seems like oh you know this is great this is great this is great this is great what do i work on uh and i'm not saying now i don't think i i still think that way but i still like i think this is great this is great this is great this is great <laughs> but i think i still want to do this uh and you know that sort of that feeling at least for me did not exist earlier because earlier i used to be like ha huh, all these things are great what to do now and then you i would like basically just like pick something uh with different factors uh so the deliberation in the decision process uh, like now it becomes slightly more deliberate uh, may not be explainable to you so i can't tell you why i picked a particular project but at least it's more deliberate for me that i am kind of deciding to do a particular thing uh, and i think maybe gut feeling i don't know how to say it but that kind of developed for me i mean i don't think it's necessarily like i'm not saying the gut feeling is right uh, it's just that <laughs> you maybe you kind of get tired of like thinking about or taking so many decisions so you decide to go with it so gut feeling can actually be two ways right it can't just be because of tiredness of like having so many <laughs> options and then just deciding you know what i'm tired i'm just going to do this one particular thing uh, so that might be actually the reason for the gut feeling to develop as you progress uh, not yeah. necessarily like a wisdom or anything else uh, i think the other thing that i also happens like what i talk about failure right uh, like failure sort of being a continual part of the process um, i think you i, I don't know for me what seem to happen a lot more uh, is earlier when i used to have a lot of these things i it was harder for me to understand what is really going on and be, because you know so i didn't know lots of things and like lots of things go wrong uh, and now also i don't know lots of things and still lots of things go wrong and i think Uh, the ability to ask small questions uh, and that actually i think is very important and that sort of also develops a little bit like fairly small and simple questions it often turns out that basically simple and small questions do reveal the most like surprising or the most relevant answers to things uh, right 
Right. So, yeah, I guess if, if I were to visualize that feeling, it would what uh, one of my advisors uh, said a couple of months back was like, you need to maximize out and to see overall perspective on the project. Because I, I think as a student, we get too much involved in the nitty gritty details of uh, being too much technical versus also trying to make a good publication and also trying to make a novel contribution, solving these things. But at the end, you cannot have uh, all the ways uh, along, like you cannot hit all the milestones and also uh, do the end thing. So yeah, that, I yeah. guess uh, that's maybe a kind of a visualization of what you are saying. So, yeah. And I think like one rule that I followed uh, more and more is basically, can I explain whatever I'm doing in three minutes? Uh, if I cannot explain it in three minutes, then basically probably what I'm doing is too complicated uh, and it needs to be sectioned out into things. Uh, yeah. This is my way of operating. Of course, it's not the right way for everyone, but this is something I follow a little bit, try to at least as much as possible that in three minutes or so, I should be able to explain what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the Richard Feynman technique, like if you can't yeah. explain it to a five-year-old, uh, yeah. you, you, you don't know it enough. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that yeah. makes sense.